All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining on today's uh, weekly outlook and uh, trading room webinar uh, for this week as the markets slowly or gradually start winding down. Uh, a quick disclaimer, as you know, trading uh, has its own risks, especially in margin trading. So you should um, always manage your risk. This webinar is for educational purposes only, um, not as a, an advice to, uh, I'm not giving advice to open, close, or hold any trades, of course. Any analysis I give is my own, my own opinion, and again, for educational purposes only. Um, and um, that's it. I mean, basically, every any question you have about any currency pair or anything else, feel free to ask. Um, again, it's only technical analysis, so uh, it's not a prophecy and uh, it's my own opinion. And of course, uh, do your own due diligence and analysis and risk management before you take any trade. Um, quickly, this week has uh, plenty of economic data, economic events, probably because uh, we're getting closer to Christmas and New Year. So, you know, most of the data are coming out now before the holidays. Um, a little bit of the data from uh, Japan was last night and uh, tomorrow we have some data from um, uh, Britain from Great Britain, from uh, the claimant town in England. So uh, unemployment rate. We have uh, the PPI producers price index in, uh, in the US and um, a speech in uh, New Zealand. China has its industrial production, which may affect all the markets. CPI in, in uh, Great Britain will also affect the pound. Uh, inflation there is rising as well. Core retail sales and retail sales in uh, the US, crude oil inventories, which will affect both crude oil price and uh, the Canadian price as well. For the Canadian dollar, uh, also the, the CPI is coming out and some uh, statements and, uh, and uh, projections and great decision from the Fed and the Federal Open uh, Meeting Committee. So uh, lots of data on Wednesday, GDP in New Zealand as well. Uh, very, very low, at least according to investing.com, the GDP in New Zealand is supposed to, is expected to drop considerably. So let's see uh, if, it, if it's really that bad, but we'll have a look at the New Zealand dollar soon and we'll see uh, that it, it looks very weak. On Thursday, we have the employment change in Australia. Uh, we have interest rate decision in uh, Switzerland. Not much to expect there, but again, uh, the Swiss is still, um, you know, I'm still watching it closely, especially in light of where the Euro Swiss is found. We'll have a look at it soon. German manufacturing PMI uh, will affect, uh, could affect the Euro and some PPI or PMI, yeah, sorry, uh, data from um, Great Britain. Uh, again, for uh, Switzerland, for the Swiss uh, franc, uh, we have to be alert also with a SNB press conference. Any anything they say about possible intervention or keeping an eye about the, the rate or maybe that the CHF is over, uh, overrated or anything like that could uh, move the CHF, the Swiss national, the Swiss uh, currency, Swiss franc uh, considerably. So be careful. And again, the margin requirements for CHF are currently higher than other currencies. Uh, some data for uh, from uh, the European uh, Union. Um, or the Eurozone and uh, initial jobless claims and building permits for uh, US. So initial jobless claims will definitely be interesting on Thursday for uh, the dollar, US dollar. 
and some data on Friday as well. Um, CPI in Europe will be interesting and could affect uh, the Euro as well. Uh, um, those of you who are, I don't know, maybe elsewhere trading uh, the Russian ruble, pay attention to the interest rate decision with an expected hike in the interest rate. A quick look at the uh, dollar index. Uh, so for now, it's holding above the nine EMA. Um, you know, there, there's been some consolidation, but for now, the trend is still bullish. So US dollar is still, still strong. And again, as I mentioned on uh, previous weeks, uh, in previous weeks, um, the target for now is around 97.50, The previous supply zone around here, just above. Um, the heat map, currency heat map, and we'll have a look at it on trading view. <coughs> sorry, on trading view as well. Um, so the Australian dollar looks pretty weak across the board. Um, Canadian dollar is pretty weak. Swiss is relatively, the Swiss franc is relatively strong. And of course, the US dollar is strong across the board. Um, just like you can see also, uh, just as I've shown right now on uh, the dollar index chart. So let's uh, have a look quickly at the, let me just share the, trading, uh, sorry, the, um, the MetaTrader platform. And let's uh, have a quick uh, view or overview over the um, majors, some crosses, and then we'll go back and have a look maybe a little bit at uh, crude oil, gold, silver, uh, major indices, maybe some cryptocurrencies as well, as much as uh, time will allow. And if we see any trading opportunities um, during the session, I'll let you know. So Euro is still in its um, you know, bearish momentum. It has had a few uh, sideways weeks in the last three weeks. Pay attention to the fact that despite this pin bar a few weeks ago, let me just make sure you can see the, the mouse. Um, Despite the this pin bar, it hasn't created any upward movement. There, there hasn't been any bullish candle, which signals more weakness. Sometimes you have to uh, pay attention not only to what is happening, but also to what is not happening. And the fact that after such a, a potentially bullish candle or a potentially reversal candle, Another bullish candle didn't appear, okay? The fact that a, uh, a reversal pattern hasn't been completed signifies or signals um, more weakness for Euro. So it's just consolidating, um, maybe waiting for the nine EMA for the moving average to come and then continue pushing the um, a Euro down uh, after this very big head and shoulders pattern. And again, the just like I mentioned in previous weeks, maybe the um, the target is this demand zone uh, below around I don't know 270 to 300 points or pips below. <laughs> Sorry, below. Um, again, it could take a few weeks or even months. It's it's a weekly chart, um, but uh, this is uh, this is probably the, the target for euro, uh, for euro dollar. Just be aware of this level 1.1170 uh, or so, where euro dollar could find some support. Um, yeah, so not much happening. I mean, intraday, obviously, you have some trends up and down, but basically, it's quite choppy. And it's it's not easy to trade euro dollar. It hasn't been easy in the last couple of weeks um, because of this choppiness and sideways movement. So what I advise you is 
for those of you who are trading euro dollar to wait for a clear uh, breakout to either side. Either it breaks out uh, to the downside, the, the previous lows, or even this uh, this trend line to the downside, or it breaks above to the upside, uh, breaks above this trend line or breaks above the, uh, the 21 EMA. Uh, but for now, it's ranging in some sort of a symmetric, symmetrical triangle. So trade, if you wanna trade, trade only short-term intraday uh, charts. It's, it will be easier for you. Um, and one more thing that I wanted to say is, yeah, that um, basically since the markets are winding down or should be start winding down next week, um, I mean, there could be uh, significant uh, volatility or significant days up and down. But most of the days, especially the days uh, around Christmas and New Year's, uh, the movement could be very, very low and the spreads could open up. So be, be careful, um, both of volatility and of wide spreads, okay? Because of low, um, because of low liquidity, it could increase volatility and it could uh, widen the spreads. Pound dollar seems to be, you know, maybe potentially performing some reversal, maybe a, a, a small correction to the upside could start. As you can see here, there's been some uh, sort of a demand zone around here. You can see a few candle wicks around this zone. Um, and on the daily chart, you could see a potential uh, reversal pattern. Again, not something significant. Um, I'm still looking at this trend line um, as a resistance line now, especially if, if price manages to come back all the way up here around 130, 140 pips, it will find both this trend line uh, that was tested and, and uh, held um, very nicely on the weekly chart. And also now we have after the moving averages crossed uh, from the upside to the downside, we have the nine EMA serving as a dynamic uh, resistance. So we have two resistance areas around here if pound dollar manages to go higher. And as we've just seen, we have some news claimant count and, and uh, interest rate decision and other and, and PPI or PMI or whatever. So we have some uh, pieces of uh, data economic data this week that could move the pound higher or lower maybe, but um, expect some volatility and maybe it will retest previous resistance areas. We have, let's, uh, yeah, we have this, this level around 133.65 as a potential resistance. Uh, of course, the moving averages, the, the 21 EMA now could, uh, the resistance we have also this lower point around 133 as resistance and of course the uh the trend line on the weekly chart on the four hour chart you can see that uh, on the shorter time frames uh, there is a potential reversal let's see if the moving averages the the shorter ones the nine the 21 cross above the 50 if the price goes higher and the moving averages cross, uh, the shorter one cross, uh, cross above the 50, and the price comes back to retest the crossing point, the crossing area, this could give you a nice signal to go long. Um, so pay attention to the four hour chart in case a crossing of the moving averages uh, occurs. On the hourly chart, you know, I can't say there's a, a clear trend. It could just as, you know, just like here, it could go up and immediately break down. So wait for some more confirmation on the four hour chart and um, just pay attention to these levels as mentioned on the daily chart. 
dollar yen is interesting. Um, you know, on the monthly chart, it made this sort of a, sort of a well reversal or, or weakness candle. Not a not a perfect reversal candle, uh, but still, it's coming from this huge supply zone. And uh, on the weekly chart, the trend is still bullish, but not not a very strong one. I mean, there have been some strong bearish candles. Um, you can see that the 9 EMA didn't hold here. And on the daily chart also there, I mean, it's stuck in between the, the 21 and the 50 EMAs. Um, not a perfect or not a clear, not a very clear trend. Again, on the longer time frames, it's still relatively bullish, but on the shorter time frames, uh, there's weakness. And on the daily chart, I drew this, these two lines, the blue line and the red line. And both of them could serve as sort of a neckline. Well, the red line could serve as a neckline uh, of uh, head and shoulders, while the um, while the blue line is not a neckline because for a bearish head and shoulders, you have the, the one that signals a reversal to the downside. Uh, for a bearish uh, head, and, head and shoulders pattern, the neckline has to be either horizontal or inclined, uh, ascending. Uh, a descending neckline is not valid for a bearish head and shoulders pattern. But still, I drew it just like uh, the one I drew on the pound and pound dollar um, line because it could still serve as a support or resistance line and, and as, as a signal, as a sort of a uh, mark uh, for breakout from uh, from the line. And uh, yeah, Enrique, there could be some uh, potential Quasimodo here. Not a very clear, not a very strong one, but we have like a left shoulder, a head, the, the right shoulder. I mean, it didn't go too much lower. It, it went a little bit lower, but it didn't close below it. It's not a, it could be sort of a Quasimodo or just a regular head and shoulders pattern. Let's see. I mean, if this right shoulder uh, goes lower from here, it could be sort of a Quasimodo, which is a, like a crooked or a tilted head and shoulders. So yeah, uh, maybe, maybe it is, but it, it could give us a hint about the weakness of the, uh, dollar yen and again i'm looking at the longer time frames the the, the monthly chart uh, we have here a uh, sort of a bearish candle from or a bearish sign uh, below this um, supply zone so bear that in mind as well as long as well as these strong bearish candles so weakness is still lingering uh, around uh, this uh, this area on dollar yen and on the shorter time frames again a lot of uh, a lot of choppiness not a clear or distinct direction so just uh, be careful if you're trading uh, if you're taking swing trades for uh, for for the week it's it's not very uh, uh, there's no clear direction dollar Swiss also still no clear direction. But Swiss itself, the Swiss franc, is still relatively strong. Um, if, if at the time, I mean, if in the past, uh, dollar Swiss was a mirror of euro dollar, so here it's definitely not a mirror. While euro dollar is going down, or has been going down for weeks now, um, and even months, um, dollar Swiss has been just moving sideways, sometimes even. Uh, that the Swiss uh, franc has been one of the strongest currencies. Uh, and you see, the, um, the, there's, there's sort of a, a push to the downside, which means the Swiss franc is still gaining strength. And if it breaks below this trend line, uh, it, could move, it could move lower, uh, which means, again, strengthening of the Swiss franc. <sighs> And in this case, probably Euro-Swiss will also continue its downward movement, which 
increases the chances of more uh, of, of Swiss National Bank intervention. Um, as I mentioned, we have the Swiss National Bank um, uh, statement this week. So they could say things that will maybe warn the, the, the investors, the traders about potential intervention and, um, and could bring volatility to, um, uh, to the Swiss pairs, to the Swiss crosses. So be very careful. There's a reason why we increased the margin there because uh, the um, chances or the potential for intervention, um, the chances are growing higher every day, especially if, if dollar Swiss or Euro Swiss continue going lower. Dollar CAD is interesting, and this could be um, an interesting buy signal for you around here. Let me just uh, clear some uh, lines here. So as I mentioned, uh, there is a, just like I said before, there's a very nice um, signal or potential signal of crossing to the upside. First of all, we're coming from this demand zone on the monthly chart. Okay, and this demand zone was tested a couple of months ago, touched and immediately bounced, and we have a confirmation here. We have this engulfing, bullish engulfing candle after the retest of the demand zone. So this is the price action coming from the demand zone, a bullish engulfing candle. And on the weekly chart, a beautiful reversal pa pattern as well. You can see here coming to this demand zone, more price action on the weekly chart. Uh, these morning stars or doji candles uh, confirmed reversal pattern crossing above the moving averages. And after a long period of bearish uh, fan from the moving averages, they have started to cross above uh, the, the, the 90 MA has started to cross above uh, the 50 MA, and now it was, well, it's completed, and the, we have the retest of the moving averages around the crossing zone, what the, the same pattern I mentioned earlier, and this pattern on the weekly chart is super strong, on the daily chart, of course, as well, um, actually on any chart, but it's, it's a strong pattern, I love it. And the fact that we have this bounce here, this wick, this candle wick, and a um, and until now we have a bullish momentum on dollar CAD. For me, it's a beautiful signal to the upside, and it it could continue its uh, bullish momentum. Uh, so, for those of you long on dollar CAD, I think there is still a uh, strong potential or to the upside. We have um, a temporary or an intermediate supply zone around here on the daily chart. So it could find some resistance around here. But I think again, on the long term or mid long term, we could see the dollar, um, the US dollar gaining strength against the Canadian dollar, especially if it breaks above these uh, previous highs and, and this, uh, this sort of, um, let's have a look at it here. This sort of a reversal zone around here. So it was kind of support or, or demand and then supply, supply. And if it breaks above, we can expect some more upward movement. And again, I'm looking at the, the broader uh, perspective here where it's coming from. It's coming from a monthly demand zone with a confirmation with price action on the monthly and on the weekly chart, okay? And now we have the crossing of the moving average, the moving averages, the retest as the moving averages cross each other and a continuation upwards. Um, and uh, Barry, not sure, uh, please uh, send this question to support and they will let you know. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking specifically about your program or in general. Uh, I doubt that in general the answer is yes, but maybe specifically for you, we can give you some some extension. Just uh, please uh, 
send your question to support. All right. Australian dollars. Sure. So this is um, this is a nice, um, a very nice, um, I think, signal to the long or mid long term for you. And if you're looking to go long on dollar CAD, again, look for areas of support uh, where you have some reference point to set your stop loss. For example, here we have uh, previous highs, breakout, retest, and continuation. So entering around here, for example, okay, we have previous highs, breakout, retest, retest also of the moving average, entering around here, this pattern of reversal with the moving averages already in a, uh, in a, in a bullish fan or bullish momentum. You have a breakout of previous high, okay, of all this, um, where is it? This zone around here. Um, so you have a breakout, you have a retest, both of this zone or this uh, resistance zone and the moving average, a reversal candle, and voila, you have a beautiful entry setup. This is the confluence of signals I always uh, preach for or preach about. That's what you should be waiting for, not just to enter anywhere, anytime, wait patiently, for these signals. So uh, that's dollar CAD. And again, I'm sure it will give you plenty more um, places to enter. Here, for example, you have previous high breakout. Again, a reversal candle entry just above the 9 EMA. You'll have plenty of these on any time frame. Just wait patiently. Aussie dollar. <sighs> Uh, Aussie dollar, super interesting. I mean, I drew this neckline. I put this uh, this emoji a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it broke below the neckline. It broke above. I'm not sure if it invalidates it or not, but it the, we still don't have a clear confirmation because I want to see uh, not just one close, but two candles closing below. Uh, for confirmation, any breakout or, or uh, above or below a, a support line or a, or a resistance line should be followed by uh, confirmation of two candles closing above or below. Um, and just like you can see here on uh, Euro dollar, it broke below, it broke above, it broke below, and then it closed with two candles and then it continued. Now, obviously on the weekly chart, if you wait for two candles to close, it could, you know, move away significantly from uh, from the end uh, from the from the entry point or the neckline or the trend line or whatever. So I'm not telling you now to wait for two weeks to close below, especially here on the Euro uh, Aussie dollar. If it, if the momentum is uh, starts, you know, breaking lower fast, uh, you know, it could move 200, 300 pips before it gives you a confirmation of the candles. But just be, you know, if you're trading the daily chart or the four hour chart or even the day chart, uh, the sorry, the hourly chart, just, um, just be aware of the fact that uh, the, the, the neckline area is a war zone. And the fact that it started moving away from it doesn't mean it won't retest it again. And now, as you can see on the daily chart, it came back, it's stuck in between these moving averages, but it could close again below. What I would suggest is to wait in, at least until we have a, another daily close below both the uh, neckline and the 9 EMA, um, preferably enter just when, only when, when, the, when the candle, the daily or the four hour chart are clearly moving uh, below the, the EMAs. For now, today, it could still move in range between the, the two EMAs. If it closes below, then wait for some uh, retracement on the lower time frames um, and then enter. Here on the shorter time frame, it's starting to move uh, lower to the downside. But for me, as long as this daily candle is kind of hovering or stuck in between these moving averages, anything can happen. 
So um, if you're looking to go short, maybe I would say on the shorter time frames, like hourly, 15 minutes, wait at, at least until you see a close below this previous low. As the moving average is pushing the price lower, only if it closes below and the, uh, and the price remains below the 9 EMA, then you can uh, start taking uh, short positions. And if the momentum, you know, if it gains momentum to the downside, then you can, you can hold it um, as part of the longer term bearish uh, pattern of head and shoulders. But until then, we could see some more volatility around uh, the neckline of the weekly chart. Overall, I still think that the that the trend is um, that the trend is super bullish, and you can see that for uh, uh, well, it it found support around previous high here, uh, sorry, previous low here, the strong bullish candle right at the low of it. Um, if it breaks this low, then definitely we have uh, more, uh, much more to go to the downside. So let's wait and see how this day closes uh, in reference to between these two moving averages. Kiwi dollar, I also mentioned that, and uh, the news, the GDP coming out later on this week, uh, which is expected to be negative, much, much, uh, uh, much lower than previous uh, month. Um, also here, the trend, as you can see, is quite bullish, uh, sorry, quite uh, bearish, uh, coming from this uh, monthly supply zone. Um, I'm not saying it's a, it's a, like, it's not a perfect bearish trend. I mean, it's kind of ranging sideways into the downside, but not a very strong, uh, not a clear, bearish um, pattern and you can see that it's kind of stuck still here around these previous highs sort of a support area uh, previous resistance area and um, it could be just maybe a, a compression or sort of a sudden sideways movement before continuing higher so remains to be seen as long as it remains above this demand zone uh, it could pick up again to the upside uh, but for now the momentum is definitely still bearish i mean no doubt about it uh, the daily chart can definitely show it and you see how the 9 ema gave us a very nice um, dynamic resistance as well as previous uh, demand zone around here, which once broken, turned to sort of a resistance areas uh, area. Um, about stochastic, well, stochastic, I mean, it, it turned higher just because of uh, the, the recent uh, move to the upside. I mean, there's no, there was a slight bullish, uh, um, slight bullish um, divergence here, but if price continues to the downside, I mean, stochastic could could turn to the downside and continue lower. So, for me, stochastic is mostly for continuation. Um, I spoke about it many times. Uh, what I like to see when I use stochastic is usually a, uh, a continuation uh, signal. For example, if I have a downward momentum, like a bearish momentum or a bearish trend, overall bearish trend, and I see that the stochastic is overbought, I'm looking for a sell, an entry to go short. And if I have a beginning of, a, of, an, uh, of, um, of an upward momentum or um, uh, movement to the upside, I'm looking for long if the stochastic is oversold. For example, um, for example here, okay, you can see that the momentum or the trend is going up. There's a move to the downside. 
with a low which is much higher than previous lows. But as you can see, even though the lows are higher, the stochastic is already oversold. The lows here are lower. This is hidden divergence, in this case, hidden bullish divergence. So that's where I'm looking to go long with the trend. Um, divergences, regular divergences can also give nice signals, but sometimes, you know, they're premature. Uh, they don't always work. And I prefer not to try uh, to pick uh, uh, tops or, or bottoms, but to go with the trend. So that's for Kiwi dollar for now. It's still relatively weak um, and it could try to go all the way down to this uh, demand zone around here or maybe uh, even lower around, around here. There are kind of two adjacent uh, demand zones um, and then we'll see what, but the momentum for now is still to the downside. Euro pound, as I mentioned, is kind of moving in, a, in, in compression um, to this demand zone. It almost touched it. Uh, so we saw some reversal. It hit this um, trend line and found some resistance, a very nice resistance around this trend line. But overall, I think there is still potential for uh, Euro pound to break higher if it manages to break above this resistance and of course uh, this trend line and of course above these moving averages because of the way it's compressing into the demands. Okay, only because of that. Um, obviously, overall, there isn't a clear trend. I mean, it's a little bit more bearish than bullish, but it's been choppy for weeks and weeks now uh, for more than half a year. It seems like, you know, as you can see here, there are some nice bullish uh, candles starting to show. Um, so we could see as part of this compression, a uh, momentum, maybe a breakout to the upside, but as long as it doesn't, you know, confirm uh, the breakout, you know, we'll have to wait and see. So midterm, it's kind of choppy, uh, not much to say about uh, about the daily or, or the four hour chart. Euro yen kind of tested the moving averages from below. Look how the 50 EMA served as dynamic support around both uh, bottoms here, broke to the downside and retested once, twice, more or less. Um, and now the 90 MA is about maybe to cross the 50 MA to the downside, which could move the Euro Yen uh, further down. The momentum is overall um, bearish, uh, both because of Euro Dollar. And again, we'll have to wait and see, but maybe uh, Dollar Yen um, will break to the downside as well. Let's see how it behaves uh, with this potential Quasimodo or head and shoulders uh, potential pattern. So that's for Euro Yen. Um, but those of you who are waiting or are looking for uh, uh, a trade, just, um, sorry, one, one moment. Sorry. So uh, those of you who are looking to go uh, long or short, just wait for some confirmation either to the downside, breaking this trend line or this trend line. And it depends on how much you want to be on the safe side or to the upside. Um, again, there isn't uh, maybe around like this. Okay kind of stuck in a range on the four hour. And as you can see on the hourly or even the 15 minute chart, super choppy. I wouldn't risk um, looking for, you know, a, a, a trade or when the, when the trend is so unclear. I mean, there's no 
no trend at all. Just wait for some uh, trend on the higher time frames or a breakout above or below these trend lines. Uh, you're welcome, Nikolaus. Uh, Swiss yen, since Swiss franc is strong, unlike other yen pairs, Swiss yen is still holding above this support line, above this moving average. Uh, so as long as the Swiss franc remains strong, Swiss yen, you know, will remain kind of kind of bullish, and I will. Again, be careful with Swiss franc uh, in all crosses because of the high margin, because of the potential intervention from the Swiss National Bank. Uh, for now, it's it's bearish. Uh, sorry, sorry, for now it's bullish. But it, if if there's an intervention or even a, a hint of an intervention, it could break immediately lower. Okay, very sharply. Just be careful. You see that the trend, I mean, it's sitting on top of this support line and on top of the uh, 9 EMA, but it's been, you know, struggling for the last three weeks. So there hasn't been any uh, push to the upside, even though it's, uh, the, 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 even though it's uh, sitting on top of these uh, support lines or areas. So there is hesitation here. Be careful. Uh, pound yen, interesting. More support around here, around this demand area. Even though it broke below this 50 MA, obviously nothing is a concrete wall. And, uh, but we found some um, support around previous demand or support area. A lot of choppiness, but as I mentioned, since pound dollar could have some uh, retracement to the upside, some corrective move to the upside this week, maybe pound yen as well will have some uh, move to the upside either to the 21 EMA or to the previous low and the 50 EMA around here. Okay, this zone is an interesting uh, resistance area and it could be retested. It's uh, for pound yen. It's not too much, like 180 pips. It could do it. It can do it in a few days, and maybe even a couple of days. Um, Kiwi yen, just like the Kiwi dollar is showing signs of weakness. Kiwi yen as well, kind of stuck below the 50 MA, below previous uh, low that it broke here. Okay, this is previous low. And the overall momentum here, just like Kiwi dollar, is bearish. Uh, you can see how it broke be below the previous lows. And now it could move even lower to, um, to these areas, previous areas of uh, demand or, or support. So this is for pound yen, obviously. Uh, shorter time frame, it could find, it can find some uh, demand or some support around here. So those of you who are trading um, shorter time frames, just pay attention to this zone. You can see it mm, quite nicely on H4. Okay, ASEAN as well, retested uh, below the moving averages. Aussie dollar is generally weak, uh, especially if it breaks again, below this uh, neckline. So if Aussie dollar starts moving lower, we can expect lower uh, downside or downward movement from Aussie N. As you can see, it's been ranging in between these uh, moving averages in the last few days. And on the weekly chart, it forms sort of a, sort of a, like, almost a um, bullish engulfing candle, not exactly, a slight gap higher. Uh, so I'm not sure how weak it is. Maybe, you know, just just pay attention and and uh, wait first to see if, uh, if it breaks below this moving average and starts uh, moving lower and then start looking for uh, entry areas uh, once it breaks 
below previous lows, below uh, previous demand zones. Okay, uh, here there could definitely be some more demand, some more, uh, we could find some more buyers. If it breaks below this area, then we should expect some more downward movement. And CAD yen, well, obviously, if dollar CAD starts moving higher, as mentioned er uh, earlier, CAD yen should start moving lower again. Um, on the monthly chart, it's still sitting on top of this uh, 9 EMA. So, uh, but on the daily chart, as you can see, strong bearish candles. So, at least in the short to midterm, we could see some more bearish momentum and uh, downward movement. All right, so as I mentioned, Euro Swiss is definitely something the Swiss National Bank uh, is keeping an eye on. And uh, this whole area is a danger zone. There is inside this demand zone, well, on the monthly chart, inside this demand zone around here uh, a new demand zone has formed on the daily chart here so maybe maybe who knows it will you know find some support around here and start moving higher which will uh, give some relief to the swiss national bank um, but if it breaks slower then uh, you know, prepare yourself for for intervention of, of some sort from Swiss National Bank, in the, even in the uh, even as a hint. Okay, they could just hint that they would intervene if it, you know, or they 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 maybe uh, perceive the Swiss national uh, the Swiss uh, franc as extremely overrated or extremely overvalued or whatever. Any word they use. Uh, could move this uh, could move this uh, currency and all its uh, peers. Aussie CAD broke below this uh, support line and um, just one sec. Uh, SMB has not been able to fight market much last few months. I'm not sure how much it tried to fight the market. It maybe gave some hints, but it it hasn't used uh, very strong rhetorics. Uh, it could start using let's say more you know extreme words or 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 give some stronger hints um it doesn't need to do much all it needs to do is to say something very uh decisive for the market to move uh, aussie cad broke these previous lows and now it's kind of retesting the this support line uh, which could now serve as resistance and the nine EMA. Interesting to see whether it will continue its downward movement or continue uh, higher. And maybe it was a false breakout. Who knows? Um, and Aussie Kiwi, you know, just pairs I, I mentioned in previous uh, weeks. Um, Aussie Kiwi could start moving to the upside from this demand zone. You can see here that we have this pin bar from last month we have this candle which is kind of bearish but even though we had a bearish candle from these moving averages eventually we didn't really i mean we went lower and then uh bounced up back uh bounced back up so now after this pin bar we could see a uh an upward movement i mentioned that uh, two weeks ago on the webinar and now this uh you know if we finish december as a bullish candle it could you know give some sort of a, a reversal pattern to the upside which will you know give us uh which will mean that the kiwi is expected to uh maybe go down faster or more than aussie dollar if both pairs continue going down against the dollar um, so just pay attention to how December ends uh, with this pattern and, um, and the moving averages on the weekly chart and this supply zone on the weekly chart. So that's pretty much a uh, 
review of the majors and some of the um, some of the uh, crosses. Let me go back to let me go back to the charts to trading view. Have a quick look at some of the um, commodities, indices, and maybe some cryptocurrencies. So again, dollar index for now is uh, just let me know. Can you see the um, trading view uh, screen? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So basically, dollar index is still, like I said, in a bullish uh, momentum. Um, Indices, major indices, these are the index futures of the S&P. Um, interesting to see, is it going to form a double top or is it going uh, to form or to continue its uh, upward momentum? Uh, CN, plans for CFDs? Well, wait for Gil is supposed to give um, some sort of a uh, webinar, I think, uh, before the end of the year. He will have some news and uh, we have various plans. So uh, wait for Gil to, um, to speak before the end of the year. He has some, he will have some interesting uh, announcements. Um, so the S&P, the, well, the S&P futures could uh, create a double top here. The NASDAQ, you can see on the weekly chart, is back inside this uh, kind of channel, well, sort of a ascending channel or maybe a bearish wedge. Um, and now, uh, or maybe a Quasimodo, as you can see here, left shoulder, head breaking below and now forming a right shoulder with this breakout signaling weakness of NASDAQ. So this is a, this is a potential Quasimodo. Um, Russell 2000, after breaking above this very long range, it broke below it. Look what a, uh, an unbelievable reversal of the Russell 2000, which is, in my opinion, a real indicator of the general market because it has 2000 um, stocks, not, and it's not, biased by huge um, high-tech or, or tech stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, et cetera, like S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, which are very, like, very much weighted or tilted um, because of these um, huge or mega companies. Russell 2000 is 2000 stocks, uh, mid cap, small cap. So they, this is for me the real indicator of the market and the fact that it had uh, broken above this huge or, or very long-term um, range and eventually broke below it, not just came back into it, it broke below it. This is um, a, a signal, potential signal of weakness, general weakness of the market. If the markets start going, the markets in general start Going down, we could expect more um, strength on US dollar and more weakness on other commodities. Uh, so, and, and of course, yen pairs as well. Usually, when the markets go down, um, dollar yen also goes down and euro and, and um, yen pairs also go down. So, uh, Nuno, I'm trying to understand your, your question. Has 2000 is the items, is it that all of those go up or that the USD is bearish? Um, the 2000 stocks are priced in, in dollar, yes. So it's, I mean, these, the, the, the basket of 2000 stocks is going down, um, which usually comes in unison with the strength of the dollar. I mean, when usually when the market goes down, people tend to go to safe haven like 
the dollar, the US dollar, like uh, the Japanese yen. Um, so, but yeah, all these 2000 stocks are priced in US dollar. I'm not sure I answered your, or, yeah, answered your question, uh, but you can clarify if I haven't replied. Uh, um, and this is the Dow Jones, which is 30, uh, 30 stocks. You know, it's, well, here, not much to say, but uh, let's have a look at gold. Still moving sideways. Um, okay, no worries, uh, no, no, thanks. Uh, so gold is still moving sideways, no clear direction, even though it's still sitting on the 21 EMA. As I mentioned, once it starts going higher, if it starts going higher, and it should have gone higher much long ago, I mean, long ago, uh, much higher um, in light of the high inflation rate in, in the US, you know, uh, the CPI and all that, but it's being rigged. It's being rigged by, by major banks, uh, both gold and silver. Um, but once they start moving higher, I expect them to move much, much higher. Um, yeah, the overall basket, of course, some may go up, some may go down. Um, yeah, definitely what is interesting is the index itself. I agree, I agree, Barry. Uh, crude oil, crude oil has been, you know, you look at this massive, bearish, engulfing bearish candle on crude oil um, last month on November, in November. So definitely more potential bearish movement to the downside is expected. As, and, and this comes again in unison with the strengthening of the US dollar against the Canadian dollar or, or the weakness of the Canadian dollar. Um, because the Canadian dollar is, um, is correlated with can, with uh, with oil and with commodities in general, but especially with oil. So oil comes down, Canadian dollar goes down as well, um, and dollar CAD like U.S. dollar against Canadian dollar will go up. So uh, crude oil could continue lower. Who knows? Maybe you know the the spread of the new Omicron uh, or or other reasons. Um, but pay attention to crude oil in the coming days and weeks, especially if you're trading Canadian dollar uh, pairs. Well, not much to say about uh, the 10-year yield for now. And I guess for most of you, it's less in interesting. Let's have a quick look at uh, cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies are showing weakness across the board. There are various, I mean, there are, I don't know, 6,000 uh, crypto pairs or whatever. I have some of some of them, uh, very few of them. Uh, you can see here that there's sort of a double top, maybe even a divergence uh, between these tops. Um, this candle definitely bearish, and you see the drop here on um, on Bitcoin. And if you look, um, this is actually something I saw. On, an analysis of uh, a good analyst, that, uh, technical analyst that I love watching. Uh, his name is Gareth Soloway. So he mentioned um, the, a similar pattern on uh, Bitcoin, sort of a head and shoulders pattern, sort of a shoulder head, which is sort of a double M, like a, an M top head and a left shoulder. And something similar could be forming here. Again, uh, maybe a shoulder, but I mean, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, it's, it's clear on the daily chart, I think. And again, Bitcoin uh, charts could differ between uh, various um, exchanges, but we could see maybe a head, uh, sorry, shoulder, head and a potential right shoulder um, on Bitcoin. So maybe, maybe we're expecting some more downside movement, maybe a, an upside movement before it continues down. Ethereum, 
um, has been strong, but on the, uh, you see now, at least for now, December looks quite bearish. If December ends as a bearish engulfing candle, we should expect some more downward movement as well. Um, Litecoin is definitely bearish. All the uh, below these um, below these moving averages. Look at this super bearish um, monthly candle on Litecoin, and well, Cardano as well. Cardano is just uh, on top of um, this demand zone on the weekly chart, and I thought maybe that it. It was showing some signs of, of reversal here. You see here this um, bearish bullish engulfing candle, this pin bar. But for now, it's showing weakness. It could continue downward um, to the downside and consume this demand zone if it doesn't show us some bullish pattern or some reversal pattern uh, in the coming days. For now, it's still super uh, weak. Let's see how this demand zone holds. Um, yeah, basically this is a, a quick look at uh, at some some of the big cryptocurrency pairs. And that's it. Pay attention to dollar CAD. It could give you some nice signals to the upside if it does some give you some retracement and, and movement upside uh, to, the, to the upside. Um, be careful with dollar Swiss, pay attention to Euro Swiss and how it behaves around this demand zone. Dollar Yen, let's see if this Quasimodo or, or head and shoulders, uh, sort of a head and shoulders pattern, how it evolves in the coming days. And if you're uh, trading pound and other pairs, of course, just pay attention, lots of news this week. So um, not, Oh, I haven't shared my. Um, I'm still, still on uh, trading view, and I was pointing. Uh, so let me just share it again. Again, pound dollar. Just pay attention to this area. Um, dollar yen. Be aware of this sort of Quasimodo or head and shoulders pattern. See how it behaves in the coming days. Dollar CAD still showing bullish momentum. Just be aware of this intermediate supply zone. But overall, as I mentioned on the weekly chart, we have a super bullish uh, pattern around here. And um, yeah, and Swiss pairs, be careful. As long as Euro Swiss is digging down um, in this, in this, um, well, sort of a danger zone around here, uh, if it's digging down, uh, it's, it increases the, the chance of intervention or some um, warning, warding from uh, the SNB later on this week. That's it. Any questions you have, if you need any help with anything, please uh, contact us via support. We're always here for you. If for some reason, I'm not here next week or, you know, or on Monday at least, or, you know, if you are starting to go on holidays, for those of you who are celebrating uh, Christmas, of course, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and for all of you a Happy New Year as well. Happy 2022. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you next week. We have still sort of like a couple of uh, week, uh, weeks before the end of the year. Thank you. Take care. Have a successful trading week and see you next week. Bye-bye.